What does it take to get explosive energy from a basketball? There's only one way to find out. Three, two, one. Whoa! And can the laws of motion throw a quarterback off his game? We won't know what hit him. Next, I'm hitting the streets to meet up with a local basketball team to find out what they can do with a little momentum. All right, guys, so today we're talking conservation of momentum. So you've already got a basketball, kickball, tennis ball. All right, so uh, everybody hold out your ball at a uniform height. There you go. And so on the count of three, we're gonna drop them all at the same time. Don't bounce them, just let them, just move your hands away and let them fall. All right, three, two, one, drop. Basketball. Definitely, it was definitely, definitely the kickball. It was definitely, it was definitely, definitely the kickball. Basketball. 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 All right, all right, all right, all right. It seems like we uh, are, are a little uh, divided as to what we think happened. Darren has the slow-mo shot to solve this argument. The winner of the highest bounce goes to the basketball, but just barely. So what would it take to make the ball go even higher? What do you think would happen if we stacked all three balls on top of each other and then dropped them? I'd say, like, the one on top go the highest. That's my guess. We'll have to find out. Yeah, I'd have to agree with them. I don't think it would bounce any higher. All the energy would probably get absorbed. And all tip over? Yeah. All right. There's only one way to find out. And we're about to see what happens when these three balls join forces for one shared bounce. Ready, guys? All right. Three, two, one. Oh! Whoa! Oh. Oh. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm the genius. Dropped solo, all the balls go about three feet. When the balls are stacked on top of each other, the top ball catapults to a height of 18 feet, a 600% increase. This stack of balls is called a Galilean cannon and demonstrates the conservation of linear momentum. Three, two, one. Oh, Momentum is mass times velocity, so the tennis ball has less mass than the basketball, but when you drop the basketball, all of the energy from that basketball was transferred through the kickball to the tennis ball, and it can't get any bigger, so it's only gonna go faster. In effect, this Galilean cannon harnesses the energy from both the basketball and the kickball as a floor for the tennis ball. Their energy transfers into the tennis ball and increases its bounce dramatically. Is there a way to use this to help my game? Nope, you're on your own, man. You have no hope. <laughs> uh. We saw an impressive transfer of energy on the basketball court. Now, I want to see what happens if we can really get some height into our game. So, I'm taking this experiment outside to see what happens when we go from a five-foot drop to a 30-foot drop. Engineer Nick is setting up a crane and a device to stabilize our Galilean cannon. All right, guys, so we've come outside in the nice warm sun to try this again, but we've made some modifications. We have this big old crane uh, that's gonna get us about 30 feet in the air so we can drop the Galilean cannon from a higher height. Uh, so uh, any predictions as to what might happen? I think it'll go two to three times higher than it did in the gym. Two to three times higher? To go off Joel's prediction, I think it'll go four times the height. Four times, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Zach and Joel, and I think it'll go four times the height. I like your positivity. When we drop the balls from such a high point, the challenge is to make sure they remain stable as they fall, so they land directly on top of one another. Nick has a plan. The balls will be connected to a PVC pipe, which will allow them to fall directly on top of each other. All right, Nick, first step, drop this. Great, so we'll get a really good point of comparison of just the ball dropping compared to the stacked ball that we do after? Exactly. In the gym, the tennis ball bounces just three feet from a five-foot drop. Let's see what a 30-foot drop does to that number. Tennis ball drop test. Three, two, one, release. So the tennis ball all by itself bounces about the height of the lamppost, 12 feet. Now, let's see how much we can multiply that by transferring energy through our stack of balls. All right, Nick, you ready? Ready to go. All right, go for it. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah! Whoa! Okay. When 
dropped on top of the two larger balls, the tennis ball soars to 52 feet. That's almost a 300% improvement from the 18-foot height we reached inside and a 400% improvement from the solo drop outside. So our team's predictions are pretty spot on. If you look at the basketball, it doesn't have much bounce at all. When the basketball hits the ground, it compresses, storing elastic potential energy that pushes into the ball above it. The momentum from the bigger basketball is transferred into the ball above it, and then transferred to the tennis ball. When the tennis ball collides with the kickball, it recoils at high speeds because of the big difference in mass between the balls. I think what was most interesting is watching how the different balls reacted to the force. The basketball, it compressed a lot, but it was nowhere near as dramatic as the dodgeball. The dodgeball just really visualized how much force was getting emitted into the tennis ball, which shot up so high. It was, it was really impressive. I have one more experiment with motion that I want to try out, this time with opposing momentum. When two objects push against each other with equal force, like in an arm wrestling match, they balance each other out. So what happens when backward and forward momentum are exactly the same? Will those forces cancel each other out too? And can we use this principle to stop a quarterback's throw in midair? To find out, I'll need some help from former collegiate athletes Kevin Buis and Brad Wakefield. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, Thank you doing? for agreeing to meet me here today. Nothing. So uh, there's something I've always wanted to try. Um, that I've seen done a lot, but generally they use a cannon to shoot a football. I'd rather have a human throw a football. What, what, what I'm gonna do first is kind of test your speed. We're looking for like a consistent 30 miles an hour. Think you can do that? Yeah. yeah. 30, right. 32, sounds good. Sounds good? All right. All right, we'll dial it in. Show me that arm, man. 28. 30. I think 30's our sweet spot. 30's a sweet spot. Yeah. Perfect. Nick is charged up to provide some opposing momentum with the help of a 261 horsepower truck. Okay, so I've got this guy clocked thrown consistently at around 30 miles an hour, so go 30 miles an hour. Okay. He won't, <laughs> he won't know what hit him. <laughs> Next, we set up our homemade hit Isaac Newton in the face game. I don't think Isaac Newton would mind. You have a nice arm, worked pretty well. Thanks. Very consistent, I got a challenge for you. Right. So I have three balls here. I want you to hit three of these Isaac Newtons behind you. All while traveling at 30 miles per hour. Oh, simple. Yeah. OK. All right, hop in the back of the truck, put All your right. harness on, and we're good to go. We have professional rigging and a closed road to keep Brad safe. You should never, never try this at home. Our quarterback just can't hit the target. But it's not his aim or his arm. Science is not on his side. Darren's high-speed camera reveals what happens when forward and backward velocities are the same. Brad throws the ball backward, clocking in at 30 miles an hour, while Nick drives the truck forward at 30 miles an hour. While Brad feels the ball going forward, the ball actually hovers in the air, then drops straight down to the ground. According to Newton's second law of motion, if two equal forces act on the same object in opposite directions, they cancel each other out, leaving zero net force and a quarterback who's not used to being zero for three. That was cool. That Thanks. was pretty cool. But you didn't make it. I failed. So you were throwing the ball at around the same speed that the truck was moving. And when you do that, you throw an object in the opposite direction that you're moving at the same speed that you're moving, it's just going to fall straight down. Right. Huh. That makes sense. Yeah. The speed of the car matches the speed of the ball, so essentially, the ball stays in place. You could throw it forward, but you have to overcome the momentum of the direction that you're traveling. Yeah. So in order to get it to actually move forward, you'd have to throw it twice as fast, 60 miles an hour, in order to hit it from where we were. I have to work on my arm a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You got a great arm, man. Thanks. It's pretty good. <웃음> 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리.